Wadi wadi is the lamb. Wadi wadi is the lamb. Wadi wadi is the lamb that was slain. Wadi wadi is the lamb. Wadi wadi is the lamb. Wadi wadi is the lamb that was slain. Praise him, hallelujah. Praise him, hallelujah. Praise him, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What he what is the Lord. What the word is the lamb, Jerry Brahanda Setoro Brokunda. What the word is the lamb that was slain. Praise him, hallelujah. Praise him, Hallelujah. Praise him, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What the word is the Lamb. What the word is the Lamb. What the word is the Lamb. That was slain. Praise him, hallelujah. Praise him, hallelujah. Praise him, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wadi Wadi is the Lamb. The Lamb of God is Wadi. John said he was crying, for nobody's wanted to open the seal. All of a sudden, somebody told him, stop crying. There's a lion of the tribe of Judah who is worthy. He saw a lamb that came and took the seal and opened it up. He is worthy. Worthy, worthy is the lamb. The lamb that was slain, the lamb that was killed on your behalf, the lamb that was killed and slain on my behalf. The mighty man of our Lord, the ancient of the days, the loving father, the savior of the world. To him be other glory. Amen, 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 and amen. What the worthy is the lamb. He is worthy. He is worthy in everything, in every situation. In your marital problem, he is worthy. In your family problem, he is worthy. Oh, in your financial problem, he is worthy. In your spiritual problem, he is worthy. There must be problems. Problems are pillars or lifters or lift that lift you up. Are you hearing me? If you stay without problem, you will remain stagnant. But when there are problems that will shake you, shake you, move you, shake you, move you, come on, you go ahead. Stop seeing problem as a, as a great obstacle. Most of the problem comes in disguise. Most of the time when God wants to bless you, He will wrap your blessing in the middle of problems and He will throw it to you. And before I understand it, you'll be struggling. I was coming out of this and this and before I understand it. Life is full of problems. There are three stages in life. If you're not coming out of problem, if you're not in problem now, you're coming out of problem or you should get into problem. Prepare your mind. Are you hearing me? Hey, God, I don't want that problem again. That's it. Well, somebody went to one man of God and said, Oh, man of God, I have some problem. I don't want to see more. I don't want people to talk about me. I don't want this and that. He laughed. The man of God said, That's a very simple prayer. Come on. I got to pray. Hmm. I got to pray. Very simple prayer. I got to pray for you. Very simple prayer. I got to pray. He knelt down. And the man of God laid down on him and said, Father, he said, You don't want trouble. You don't want problem. You don't want people to gossip him. You don't want the people to speak against him. You don't want to have anything. Father, because of this, he's on earth in life. I don't want to show this thing. Give him death. Give him death. Let him die now. The man said, No, sir. No, sir. 
That's not what I was demanding. He said, that's it. what you are demanding by implication. You don't know what you are demanding by implication. You don't want to live more. <laughs> Let problem not shake you. See them as stepping stones. Are you hearing me? Stepping stone. Stepping stone. Stepping stone. Stepping stone. Stepping stone. And you go higher. So many people, the problem that would have been a stepping stone for them, challenges that would have been a stepping stone for them, is where they are still crying now and mourning and complaining. Stop being a complainant in the house of the Lord. Are you hearing me? Stop being a complainant in the house of the Lord. Have the mind of a winner. Have the mind of a victor. I will win no matter how long it takes me. I'm going to win. No matter how long it takes me, I'm going to be victorious. No matter how long it's going to take me, I will stand my ground and I'm going to win. Me and my Jesus, we are going for Thanksgiving. Are you hearing me? Have such a mind in you. Have such an idea in you. Have such a thought in you. Don't despair because of little things, because of little challenges in your marriage. Oh, you have concluded, you have despaired. Because of this, because of that, challenges must come. Are you hearing me? All these challenges must come. They must have to come. They must have to be there. But it takes a man of courage to say, No, you are there, but I'm bigger than you. You are there, I am greater than you. Oh, come on, I will see how you came. I will be here, you will go again. Stop crying over problems and troubles. There is a God who is behind you. Let those troubles come. Let those problems come. And he, the Lord, will lead you out. Hallelujah. Bible says, many are the afflictions of a righteous man. That many trouble would like to see an uh, uh, a righteous man. A righteous man is so beautiful, spiritually, mentally, reasonable. Oh, he's attracted to a lot of things. A righteous man is like a light. When you have a light in the desert, the, uh, that even in the outside light, not to sit in that come and push it. Why? Because it's light. Light will attract a lot of things. Are you hearing me? Some of the bears will come. Some of the incense will come. Especially when you put it nearly. There was one crusade we went to one day. You know, the moment we put on the floodlight, oh, all the termite, all the flies in that area. People in the crusade were all doing like this. They were all doing like this. They were all doing like this. Even we went to instead of buying, you know, shear toss, spreading it, but you know when you spread it, it goes into the air. Few we are falling down, few we are still clouding and clouding and clouding and clouding. I told them, watch this thing that happened. Within small time, they will go. That's what life problem is like. And in within 20, 30 minutes, we couldn't see them flying again. They have come, seen the light, hugged the light, played with the light. All of a sudden, their wings become weak and they fell off on the ground. We said, do you see how you wasted the shit us this time around? Every resource God gave to you, don't waste them. Are you hearing me? So we're talking about what well, we're going to end up today, round it up today, causes of setback. God bless you. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Wherever you are in any part of the world, good follow you. Thank God for the wish of greeting good. Is it morning? Good morning. Is it evening there? Good evening. Is it night there? Good night. Whatever thing is there, good afternoon. And may the peace of the Lord rule over you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love that song. That song that, that said, All refrain we hope in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to be. All our privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend. What a friend that Jesus is. What a friend. Oh, what a friend. What a friend that Jesus is. In time of sorrow. What a friend. What a friend that Jesus is. In time of sickness. What a friend. What a friend that Jesus is. In time of plenty. Oh, what a friend. What a friend that Jesus is. In our situation. What a friend. What a friend that Jesus is. He holds everything about your life. Stop getting discouraged. Share yourself up and say, and for what? This thing discouraging me, is it not purposely to make me lose kingdom of God? 
What is it here on earth that will so hinder me and so discourage me? No, 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 no. I refuse to be discouraged in the name of Jesus Christ. Come and speak to yourself, speak to your mind, speak to your conscience, and speak up yourself again. Why are you so low? Why are you so downcasted? Talk to yourself and say, I can do better than this. I am on top. I am a winner. The God of heaven and earth is my king and my God, my Lord, and my Father, and my Savior. I can do better than this. I can do more than this. Let me advise you, stop listening to what people are saying about you. They will talk bad, negative, contrary against you. Stop listening to them. Listen to the word of God and know what God is saying about you. Father, we give you praise and worship. We honor you. We adore you. Your word is what coming again. And so what is coming for right now, we bless your Lord. We worship you at end of the days. Have your divine and mighty way. Have your divine and excellent way. Have your divine and gracious way. And let the name of Christ alone be honored and adored forever. In Jesus' name, to you be all the glory. Let that word comfort right now. Father, I want to conclude this message today. When the voice of man stops speaking, may your voice go ahead speaking. Sanctify us, purify us, and watch us again. That we shall not be losers, but we shall be winners at the end in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we're talking about causes of setback or even dryness in your spiritual life, dryness in your financial life, dryness in your marital life. Dryness all over you. What are the causes of the dryness? This is what we're talking about. What you do be dry. No, you ought to be bubbling in the Lord every day. You are like a tree planted beside the rivers of waters. Come on, you keep on taking. Have you not been taking a journey on the land? Even if you're in the air, you see that when the plane is maybe getting lower, you see very, very greenish, greenish, greenish plants. You saw the ones will be green, but they were darker green ones. Check that place, there is water there. There is stream, there is river there. The water is around that place. And those plants are living in plenty every minute. And those plants are taking more of water. When you read the word of God, they are taking more of water. When you are reading the Bible, when you are praying, you are watering yourself, you are going up higher every day. I love that song that says, I am going higher every day. I am going higher every day. Hallelujah. I am going higher every day. I am going higher every day. Are you going higher every day in the Lord? Or are you diminishing? Are you doing diminishing? Are you doing the land? No, I don't want you to pit out. I want you to keep on with the Lord. I want you to keep on bubbling in the joy. So that your song will be, the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the midst of problem, you said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the midst of lack, you still sing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the midst of plenty, you still sing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. In the midst of marital cases, challenges, problem, you still sing, the joy of the Lord is my strength. He gave me living water, and I thirst no more. He gave me living water, and I thirst no more. My God gave me living water, and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the most holy God is the strength of my life. And that should be your strength in Jesus' name. He gave us living water, and we thirst no more. Are you still thirsty? Receive the living water. Receive the living water from the Lord Jesus. Drink the living water from the Lord Jesus. Receive the living water from the Lord Jesus. Drink the living water from the Lord Jesus in Jesus' name. Hey, what a friend, what a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. We have told you a lot of things that are responsible to set one back. If you were able to start from part one, part two, part three, part four, part five, part six, part seven, part eight, part nine. Today we're talking about part ten. I want to conclude this message today by the divine grace of God. The causes of setback, things that makes man to go back. Today we're talking one of the things that makes somebody to go back is not paying your tithe. Not paying your tithes. Not paying your tithe. It has led a lot of people too far away and too backwards. If you are not a tither, what happens to you? Let's see Malachi chapter 3 from verse number 7. Malachi chapter 3 from verse number 7. Even Malachi chapter 3 from verse number 7. Malachi chapter 3 from verse number 7. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances. This is what God is talking. You see what God is talking. He said, even from the days of your father, you are gone away from my ordinances. I have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. 
But you say, wherein shall we return? Verse 8. Will a man rob God? God told them, return. You have gone astray. Return. Ah, ah, God, where are we not? Are we not doing sacrifice? Are we not coming to morning service? Are we not coming to midweek service? Are we not coming to uh, worship day? Ah, on the worship day we are there early. Ah, what do you mean? God said, you can't just worship me like that. You got to worship me with your finances again. You know, people believe that after the Lord, it is the money. So that a man who used to can make God easily here, they got to use their substance to worship me. Let me know. And the Bible says, will a man rob God? Can you rob me? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithe and in offering. The Bible said, in tithe and in offering. Then God came in and spoke something. He said, you are caused with a cause. That means somebody could be caused because he has not been paying his tithe. The Bible said, we have robbed God. First of all, we have to repent. If you are a child of God, you have not been paying your tithe. You got to repent because you are a robber. You have robbed God. You have gone international. Extra. Eh, eh, ah, 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 it is not even international. When we talk about international, we talk on the planet here. You are stealing from God direct. You are a thief. You are stealing from God. In fact, you are the number one. If you are the leaders of the team, if you can steal from the most holy God without being afraid, is it mere man? You can. If you take what belongs to God, tight belongs to God. If you can take it, and then you are not afraid of Him. Is it human being that you'll be afraid of? No, 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 no. We have read the Bible, the word of God said, Will a man rob God yet? You have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. God said that in tithe and offering, when you are not a tither, when you are not giving a quantitative or bountiful offering, definitely, 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 you will go back and you will go back. You will not progress. You will not go far. It is only people that will go far are the people who are givers, people who believe in God, people who trusted in the God that are giving, people who knows that giving is multiplication. You see to that. That is why when you know the importance of giving, you know what it means that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the only begotten son said, come and go and win souls for me. Go and give me more souls. I need more souls. I, give, I need more souls. If you know the importance of giving, you first of all give your life to Jesus of Nazareth. The, first, the highest giver is he who has given his life before he gives other things. Are you hearing me? There are people that have they love God. They can build church for you. They can raise pastor house for the pastor. They can give, but they have not given their life to Jesus. On the last day, they will not be rewarded. They will be on the other side because the condition is that you must be born again. They are not born again. They are doing the first thing. They are doing the last thing first and doing the first thing last. I pray for such people that have love for God. We, we, they, they, I know one who has built churches. Pastor Nate, who have done a lot of them, but he's not, he's still not yet born again. He's just a lover of God. I pray that so God will have mercy on such a man and such a woman in Jesus' name. Will a man rob God? Can a man rob God? He yeah, have said it. The man are rob, men are robbing God. Will a, man, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. You said, we are in love. We robbed the entire and offering. If you are not a tither, you are a robber. You are a, a, a you know, highway robber cannot be used to uh, uh, fathom it is you to that. You are even from God. You are robbing God. Oh, you are caused with the cost. When you don't pay your tithe, the cost, there's a cost that is following the person. The person will have cause of setback. The person will have cause of downwardness. The person will have cause that what he does will not succeed, will not prosper. A lot of children of God don't pay their tithe. The many teachers that have come into there, don't pay, don't pay, don't pay. Look at the God you are dealing with. A lot of people have paid their tithe. Abraham originated this tithe. He said, how can God help me? And I came back and this and this and that. Bible saying that the spoiling man, he gave to Prince, you know, he gave to him. Otherwise known as Prince of Peace or Prince of Salom. I mean, you see to that. He met him on the way. He paid him tithe. Yeah? And he prepared bread and gave to him and blessed him. Yeah, there are funny things that some people will call man of God and say, Daddy, uh, uh, I begin to pray for you now. I, I bless you. It's, you can pray for a man of God. It's not a crime. But the man of God is he that blesses you. God uses him to bless you. Don't just, water flows down. It doesn't flow up. You see to that. You see to that. Some people will call me. Uh, let me pray. I want to pray. For, I just said, okay, 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 pray. Let's pray together. Pray, 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 pray. It's wrong. Pray for him. Intercede for him. But when you have opportunity of talking with him, allow him to bless you. Are you hearing me? Allow him to be the one to bless you. 
except you don't trust him to be a child of God or seed of righteousness. Hmm? A seed of righteousness. Some people will wake up in the morning and say, Daddy, I want to pray for you today. As I'm praying for you right now, they will write it, write it. I will smile. I said, they don't know what flows that. It doesn't mean you cannot pray for man of In your closet, pray for man of God. But when it comes to all this way, allow him to bless you and pray for you. Tap more and receive more. But when you fear, is it not me that I'll pray for this man of God, pray for this man of God, pray for this man of God, you are making yourself pride is coming in there. I will we'll still talk about pride later. So whenever one doesn't pay his tithe, you say, your cause with the cause, you have robbed me, even this whole nation. You have robbed me. So any nation that doesn't pay tithe is robbing God. So many European countries, you see them having projects for God and for things of God. So many countries in America, you see they're having projects, but in African countries, no, 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 no. They will even come and tax church. I was there. they brought it for, uh, what, what is it? They brought it for me here. Oh my God, my mind was blown off. I didn't know where I kept it again. My mind was blown off. Uh -huh. Look at what they brought to me here. I said, uh -huh, who is it? I said, it's me. They brought this paper with this big stamp. With this big stamp. It said, uh -huh, you are signed board. You are going to be paying. If you see the amount of money they call that you be paid monthly. The sign board you put for church. You see to that. When in many other countries they are budgeting for the church of Jesus Christ, they see the church helping the poor, helping this, the government will come in and sponsor. The government will come in and be a help. But the government of this place is taking every one naira from the church, including the church sign board. That is the government and that is what we are seeing over here. I told them it cannot happen. I told them we are not, not me, we are not going to do that. We have our right we have been cooperated with the government, and what do we get from this government? We are not going to do that. I told them, you should be ashamed of yourself, that you so belittle yourself. You so belittle yourself that this is the kind of job that you are doing. It does not happen and cannot happen. I don't want to see you here anymore. Please leave this place now. What do you mean? Do you know who God is? How can you be taxing men of God, taxing men of God, following men of God, tax their signboard? Tomorrow now you tell other before we have every program, before we put any sticker, or before we even print handbill, we will come. If you talk of big ball, uh -huh, we are the ones that do it. The Afro media and whatever. We don't have anything to do with it. We prepare our own, do program two, three, four days, and we remove it. And now you want to come and, uh, uh, and fabricate a rule. It doesn't work. It will not happen. You told me you can tell the governor, I said, both you and that governor, it, it will not work. Are you hearing me? And I made a decree. Any governor that comes and says church is his headache and that he must collect money from churches and from church signboard, if not he closes that church, God will close him up and remove him from that seat. God will disgrace such a man. God will disgrace such a governor. And that all the committee that are responsible for that, God will disgrace them and they will never smell office in government again and in politics anymore. That's a decree I made and it is standing. You say, man, people have so done a lot of things to an extent of coming to church. Nobody goes to Hindus, nobody goes to mosque, nobody goes to this place or this place again. They only come to church and deal with the church. Ah, so what happened? No, it will not happen in my generation. It will not happen in my time. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. Let's test power, maybe they want power. They want to be removed out of that place and surely it will come. So, but when you are a child that pays your tithe, you know you have a part and the role you're playing in the Lord. You will stand your ground. I was taking care of somebody. In fact, my immediate elder brother, he was somewhere and they called me and told me he had stroke that morning. They rushed him to hospital. They had to be coming and I discovered the place they told me to come is too far away. It would take me about, it would take me about four or five hours to get there. And by the time they come, it was already late. I said, I won't come. I am not coming and went back to God. If you see the money they were demanding from me, I will be the one to pay the money. I just went back to God and said, God, you know I'm a title. When I get the money, I'll give you your own and I'll, eat, I'll take my own. You have taken your own, I've taken my own. Now this emergency has come in. Whose own will be brought? That means I'll bring part, you bring partner because we're partnership. In my finances, we're partner. So in my problem, we should be partners. You should share with me. 
After, after praying this prayer, I said, God, be preparing your own. Or let me be preparing my own. The Bible says, you, you know, present your strong reasons. If you know your strong reasons, present your strong reasons before the Lord. After praying these prayers, I went in within two hours, or thereabout, they called me again. And they said, he has opened his eyes. I said, thank God, though. After some time, they called me. I said, he's shaking the leg. I said, thank God. After some time, they called me. He had gotten up. He's sitting down. I said, thank God. After some time, they told me he has left the hospital. He has gone strong, perfect. And by perfectly healed. By the time I went there again, by the time I met him again, he was standing strong and very, very agile. This is what I think can help you. And you remind God, I say, remember, I'm a title. I am a title. Do you see to that? So what are we trying to say? What are we trying to say? Are you a tighter before the Lord? If you are a tighter, surely you have blessings. But when you don't have it, when you are not paying a tithe, you say you are caused with the God, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Let me teach you how to pay your tithe. When you get that tithe, put it in an envelope, that portion of the Lord, the 10%. If you are doing a business, and then you make 1,000 out of your business, God have 100 out of it. Are you hearing me? Take that gain. The, 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 that is your gain, out of your gain, bring your whole gain, share them into ten. Take one part, take two part, take three, take four, take five. Let God take only one part. Take the sixth part, seventh part, eighth part, and the ninth part again. God is not a greedy God. Learn how to pay tight. And sometimes God will test us if we can be faithful in paying tight and little, little tight. If you can be able to pay tight of five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars. If you are not able to pay such a tithe of 20 naira, 30 naira, 100 naira, you cannot pay tithe of $10,000. It will be too big in your eyes. But there are people who are paying above that today. I'm talking about paying tithe of uh, tithe. You see to that. So, do you at all pay your tithe? That is why you complain from month to month. Your level is there. There are tithe you pay, and then God will go and begin to open doors. Okay? You are caused with a cause. So whenever you bring the tithe, put it in an envelope. I said, Daddy, you told me, you commanded me. It's not even true. You commanded me to bring my tithe into your storehouse. Father, look at my tithe. All the causes that follow people that don't pay tithe, I remove them out of my head. No cause will follow me. No cause will follow my vehicle. No cause will follow my going out. No cause will follow my coming in. You pray and put it in an envelope and go to church. So many churches don't have time today to pray for your tithe. But then you have over. They say, we bless you, we bless you in Jesus' name. Drop your tithe, drop your tithe, drop your tithe, go. But if it is our churches that pray for tithe, and then you pray and bless, after you have prayed and remove the cause on you, when you get there again, they will still pray for you. You'll be blessed. Then if God have led you to be sharing your time, maybe you are you have the, where you're worshiping, you still have another man of God that's so powerful in ministering the word of God who had benefited in you, you, you have benefited in his life. Tithe could be shared. Are you hearing me? Your tithe could be shared. Yes, you can pay your tithe to one person, two person, three person. You could share your tithe and pay your tithe to these people. Are you hearing me? So when you are not paying your tithe, when you pay your tithe, maybe in two men of God, three of them, you see that this one will pray and bless you, this one will pray and bless you, this one will pray and bless you. And then you'll be favored more and more. That's the wisdom. That's the idea. That's one of the secret so many people, so very few people are succeeding with. Are you hearing me? Last time when I thought, I told you four people you can pay your tithe to. That's not what I'm going to again. I'm not going to repeat that. I've made that teaching. I preached that teaching. Maybe if you felt you were not there or they are not there, uh, you can call me and then you can send me tests through WhatsApp. Our WhatsApp number is there. I will educate you more on that area. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, one of the things that causes it back is this. Look at Bible said, A cost man cannot go far now. You might not be caught from your lineage. You might not be caught from your father or mother. But for not paying tithe, you become a cost person. Hey! May God help me never to attract cause of not paying my tithe. Rather, let me pay extra. You are caused with a cause, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. You know, so many men of God, there are so many men of God that pay their tithe in their church. I will be laughing at them. You are the gist of this church. Why are you paying your tithe here? Pay your church tithe outside. Tithe is like a continuous flow. Tithe is like a continuous flow. Like I used to say it, there was one bishop I paid my tithe one year. Hey, that year was too hard, too difficult, too things were too hard, too hard for me. I, I said, but God, I'm a tithe, I'm a tithe. I went and started praying. The Lord told me, the man you're paying tithe into does not pay his tithe. 
The tithe is supposed to be a continuous flow. When you pay, somebody will pay tithe of tithe. If you pay me tithe now, I'll pay tithe of tithe. If I pay that man of God tithe, he will pay his own tithe of tithe. If that man of that bishop pays to another bishop, that bishop is supposed to pay tithe of tithe. He continue moving on. He continue moving on. He continue moving on. It doesn't stop. But there are people you pay your tithe, they say, oh, God bless you, thank you, they bless you, pocket it, and gradually eating it. It will even affect you because it's not fluid. God showed me a pipe that was buried, water system pipe that was buried, that was pulled off and it was filled up. What filled up with noise and there's no way how water can pass through it again. And the Lord told me, anybody that doesn't pay his tithe, this is what his life looks like. And any water you walk for in there will be a waste water. To most of the time, there are some money that will come into my hand and say, God, why do I plan this? Every tithe to give is a seed. It's supposed to manifest. It's supposed to grow. You cannot be compelled to pay tithe when he cannot pray you out of situations. Are you hearing me? Your tithe is supposed to guarantee your financial situations. Your financial... Look at what the Bible said. You are caused with the cause, for you have robbed me, even this no nature. Look at verse 10. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse. All. There are, Bible said, bring you all the tithe. This is one of the things that causes setback. One, bring all, not some. Bring all, bring all, bring all, bring all. So many people may be walking a walk that may earn you maybe 3,000 euro. You know the tithe is 300 euro. The, 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 the $300,000, $3, you know the tithe is $300. The 3,000 naira, you know the tithe is 300 naira. It is universal. It is the same everywhere. And the person may say, ah, this week I have done a lot of expenditure. Instead of you to remove from your own, you remove from that of God. You, when they are talking about that, ah, this church is talking about that. If I don't pay it now, they will do this and this and that. You take 200 euro or you take 100 euro and drop it. Ah, let it be my tithe. You are not paying tithe. You are not paying tithe. You are not paying tithe at all. The Bible said, bring you all the tithes. Not so. All. All. Into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. One of the primary purposes is for the men of God to eat and then become healed, become all right, so that they have strength to talk to you. Holy Ghost is save you. Holy Spirit is save you. To carry it and for it to wear you, you need to be physically strong. I tell you. There was one young man like that. Every time he cast away a demon, every time he keep on casting demon, he's always fasting and fasting. He will fast and will not get strength to talk and he will be casting away a demon. One elderly pastor came, called him and advised him and said, when you're under fasting, like this, that this one, you're not strong, please stop doing deliverance. These demons are, you know, they are equally wise. So you go to God, get your strength. When you come, you can pray. He looked at him and said, old man, old prophet, this one doesn't know the letters in town. This and this and this and that. At the end of the day, what happened? Mm. At the end of the day, he continued to humiliate the Buddha's demon. He was so weak in the name of this. I commanded the demon, you know, held him, lifted him up, threw him on the ground. <sighs> there are some power that when they want to go, you hold your hand and say, in Jesus' name. Spiritual and physical power. It's not by might, it's not by power, but you still need the physical strength to do some deliverance. If you see what we see in the deliverance room, sometimes the demon will so fight the person, lift the person up. One of the pastors doing with me deliverance, the demon lifted him up, we have to rush to self-guide him. If not, the demon would have hit the head on the ground. You see to that. So the Bible, the word of God, so bring you all the thoughts into the storehouse, that there may be food enough for the man of God. For the house of God. House of God is supposed to be a place of plenty. A place where everything will work out. Are you hearing me? I'm not talking about the, how people bastardize tithe today. When it has been taken enough, the orphans will come in, the widows will come in, the poor people will come in. And this money will be used to take care of everybody. And not just one man carrying the whole tithe, establishing himself, doing this and this and that. That is outside the scripture. It's not the will of God. Tied to be a beneficial money. There are people who are already presently blessed. When they bring it, there are people who are less privileged. As far as the house has been taken care of, the church has been taken care of, the men of God, the ministers of the gospel have been taken care of. It should go to the poor, it should go to the less privileged, it should go to widows, it should go to other people. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's the money of tithe, and that's where it's supposed to be. Even in some churches, those people that are laboring for the tithe, they're not even giving them anything. They ask them to go and do another business. They're doing another business. While the Bible says, where well, we read there before yesterday, he that preached the gospel to eat through the gospel. He that preached walking the altar to eat through the altar. And that is why we allow a lot of men of God to be working today. They will be working for seven, ten hours. And by the time they come to preach, they're already exhausted. Oh my God. Oh gosh. There's one man like that. You know, he was so hungry. He was so poor. He borrowed money. In those days, money had bigger weight and value. He borrowed money and started rearing beds. So he went and sold that bed that day. He got loss of the money. 350 naira was a very big money. He, he, that was the loss. He said, where will I get 350 naira? Where will I get 350 naira? Maybe 350 naira by then was like uh, uh, maybe 80,000, 100,000. Hey, the man was thinking and thinking. And then he was coming from market. He went and prepared for Bible study. He came and opened his Bible because he was already burdened, because he was already troubled, he began to say, open with me, Luke chapter 350 Naira. Luke chapter 350 Naira. And he opened Luke chapter 350 Naira in his Bible and started reading. Because already he has prepared the message, he knew where he prepared, he knew where his test is coming from. But because of the burden of the heart, the Bible out of the abundance of the heart, the man speaked. And he was preaching Luke 350 Naira. And people were watching them, church members folded their hand. They were watching their pastor having a new Bible written in the night. Luke chapter 350 Naira. If we are all doing what we're supposed to do, this work will not be suffering the way it is suffering. There are a lot of men of God who are real and genuine, who have places to go, but nobody is backing them up. Well, sometimes when a member pays that, he that is given to the pastor. You're not paying that out to your pastor. People like us that don't depend on anybody for every month, pay every monthly pay. Sometimes people may say, man of God, I pay it, who bless them. But we depend on God. He's our source, he's our provision, he's our provider. He's our everything. To him be every glory. We bless him forevermore. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. When I go to so many churches, ah, they complain this and I say, why not look, uh, you know, imitate me. Please, God, he will open doors for you. I told them, I don't know where my next meal will come from. I'm in full-time work for the Lord. But God must use men and women. God must touch the heart of men and say, remember this man of God. And that is what we, what we are in for. The little we have, we make good use of them to the glory of God. And the Bible says, but you, bring your details into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here which says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Have you seen it? The Lord said, keep paying your tithe. And then, you can't keep your tithe, paying your tithe and keep being poor. But when you don't pay your tithe, you become lower and lower and lower. And then the Bible said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Tithe rebuke the devourer. It's not you that will rebuke. God said, when you pay it, he himself will rebuke the devourer. Okay, he will rebuild the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your wine cast a fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of food. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you blessed. Why? Because you are a tither. So when you don't pay your tithe, you're under cause, you have setback. But when you pay it, keep paying it out. Encourage your husband, even if he's not born again, tell him, darling, can you be paying tight? So that not when money dries from there, it dries totally. I know so many unbelievers who are not even born again, they are paying their tight. The tight, whether you're born again or not born again, when you pay it, the rule is there, whether you're born again or not born again. That is why blessings of car, houses, and financial is not a measure for heaven. Somebody can observe this rule and it works for him. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's one of the things when you're not a tighter, definitely you are setting a ladder to climb down. But when you pay your tithe, come on, you'll be going higher financially. Then you rebuild the devourer. Then when you're born again and you're really paying your tithe, you're cleanly born again, you're genuinely born again, come on, you will excel far and higher. May God give us grace in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. May the name of Christ alone be praised, exalted, and glorified, and let Christ's name be honored. May he open the eyes of our understanding. There are people that used to 
when you ask some people, do you pay their tax? You say, I used to. Oh, when I hear people telling me I used to, I used to pay my tithe. That means you don't pay it again. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord and help us to go ahead, to go far in the Lord and in Christ, and Christ then be honored forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ. Another thing that causes setback we're concluding today with is pride. 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 No, I am bigger than him. I'm taller than him. Do you know who I am? We are all breathing dust. We are all made out of dust. We are breathing dust. Stop that pride and arrogance in your life. Look at what the Bible said about pride. In the book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18, Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18, pride have brought a lot of people down. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18, Proverbs 16 18, pride goeth before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. Pride will come before destruction. I told you this thing before, let me repeat. A young man like that, you know, a young man like that was a powerful preacher, Oh, whenever he preaches, people will begin to shake tear. People will begin to run. You know, he's a motivational, powerful preacher. Oh, people like to hear motivational speaker. Wow, let him talk something to me today. Let him preach this to me. And they organize a program for him. They bring him medical doctors, engineers, lawyers. I mean, educated, the allies, the educated class. Oh, when they were singing praises, the man was shaking his leg. And he was saying, ah, uh, can these people do well? Let them do, let them do, let them do. Masha, yeah. Oh, let them do. I will bombard them. I will tell them who I am. I will tell them how I preach. I will tell them he was so haughty in the spirit. He was arrogant. By the time before they couldn't finish introducing him, he was rushing to the altar. He rushed to the pulpit and because the haughty way, the prideful way, he went up to the altar. Psh, the message he said disappeared. He looked up, he couldn't remember the message. He scratched his brain, he couldn't remember. He did this, he couldn't remember. Because of one, that is what pride can do in the life of a man. That is what pride can do in the life of a man. So while we read the Bible said, pride come, go ahead before destruction. And then people that believed in him and trusted him that brought many people there, all of a sudden, everything failed. All of a sudden, everything ended. So many people felt they are more anointed than this person. They are more gifted than this person. They are more or more. Or the Bible said, no, they that compare themselves with others are not wise. Stop comparing yourself with anybody. Humble yourself and God will keep lifting you up. Keep humbling yourself. I know a lot of men of God who are far in it. They still call it star. I said, ah, no, no. Nah. No, now nah, don't do this. Yes, sir. I will come, sir. Uh -uh. This is humility. God don't want humility and not pride. Eh? God wants you to humble yourself, no matter what happened, no matter how great you feel you are. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Somebody saw a young lady that was helping in, in, in watching the church. He felt that the lady is so poor. He just put his hand in his pocket, called the lady out. I saw the way you are coming to sweep the church. Ah, he felt that the lady has nothing doing. That was why. He told the lady, well, ah, this is my business card. I give it to you. Just give me a call. He was just prideful. And the lady said, let me give you my own too. The lady went to one powerful Estonic car and opened it and said, this is my business card. He asked the lady, are you the owner of the car? The lady said, one of my cars. Then why do you spend time coming every time to watch the church? I delight in doing the will of God. I delight in doing things like this. I said, wow. I thought you are just an ordinary person. I felt that you needed help. So let me come and help you out of this. The lady said, I will give you a business proposal. I will give you a contract. Oh my God. Pride. Pride. Begin to ask God, remove every pride in your life. Every arrogance of any type. Do you know that when you are proud, you are incorrigible. You can't take correction. Mm -mm. You cannot take correction from people. Who, who are they to advise you now? Who are they? So many people will ask people, who are you to advise me? Do you know who I am? I prayed for a young man. The anointing stuff flew. He was flowing. Grace was there. He was going, moving on. He was asking one lady one day, do you know who I am? Do you know the level of people I move with? He begin to mention the level of men he's moving with now. Hey, pride. 
Pride. Pride. You don't know it's lifting you up, but it has no balance. That's one thing about pride. As pride is lifting you up, it is not balanced. Be careful when pride is lifting you up. Anytime it could collapse and the person will fail from them. Mm -mm. Look at what the Bible said again about pride in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. Pride, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. Talking about pride again. Proverbs chapter 8, 8, 8 now. Chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 13. Hmm. The Bible said, The fear of the Lord is to hurt evil, pride, and arrogance, and the evil way, and the frontward mouth do I hurt. If you say you are afraid of God, you fear God, then the Lord God, you must hurt evil, and you must hurt pride. Arrogance. Pride was one of the things that threw the devil down here on earth. Do you know that? Ah, I am this. I am who are you without Christ? Who are you without God? Who are you, child of God? Who do you think you are? Humble yourself and God will learn how to lift you up. The way up is down. Don't be noticed everywhere. Have you not seen three, four men of God talking? Everyone wants to speak to. You do know what happened years ago? In Nigeria here, they invited outside. The chairman of all the Christians. And they brought in the chairman of Christian Association of Nigeria. And then, uh, in the Islam world, they brought out uh, the Sultan of Sakata. Do you know by the time they went there, another powerful Nigerian Christian also appeared there. And was dragging the seed between them. When they said we want to interview the chairman of the Christian, he was there. He had them specifically. It is uh, it, one one person. But he, no, 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 no. He felt he's a father. He felt he's old. He felt he's known. He felt he has money. He felt he's better in position than the man. But why do God give him such position and not you? Allow the chairman to speak. Do you know they were, when the people interviewed, they came in and said, ah, Christians, you are too? Muslims, one? Ah, who was actually invited? Actually, the person had his own way. He was invited. But having come in there to see that it is one, one. He would have humbled himself to be there. He was answering questions until later. Those people still have to say, we mean who is the chairman of the Christian in your country? And this one said it. They now took him aside and granted him an interview. Was he not put to open share? Let's humble ourselves. There are places we go with you situation to look at. When you get to occasion, when people more important than you come, leave it for them. Are you hearing me? Leave up for them. So that you will not be pointed and say, hey, you, 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 come, go. Mm -mm. May it not be like that for you. May the mighty hand of grace be upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To this God, our King and our God, be our glory. So that pride will not come our way and pride will not swallow us in the name of Jesus. Do you know that pride can lead you to shame? Yes, now. Whenever pride is in your life, shame is coming. The person will fail. A lot of many men and women who have fell in is as a result of pride. Look at Proverbs of the 11, verse 2. 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 When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. When pride come, cometh shame. Child of God, why are you proud? You prayed, the cripple walked. You prayed, the blind man saw. You prayed this and this happened. Is you not all by grace? Did, are, you, are you the originator of the anointing? Are you the maker of the grace and the anointing? Humble yourself. Even when I pray, when miracle happen, what the time, I become more humble. Sometimes after going to a powerful program, when there are healing, deliverance, salvation, repentance, I will lie down my belly on the ground. I will say, oh, who am I, Lord? Who am I? Who am I that heaven will honor me? Who am I, oh God? I will be crying, I will be calling upon the name of the Lord. I will say, God, keep helping me. Lord, keep humbling me every day. Pride have never helped any man. A lot of men of God that, were, that would have been powerful and great, pride came into their life. Today, where are they? Many of them have vanished. Many of them have disappeared along the way. Many of them have a good history and they are no more there. You mean a whole me? You mean me? You, you, you mean me? You know, there was a the time Bunky was going on preaching the word of God. 
somebody claims to have uh, died and resurrected and bonky you know wherever bonky is going he say your testimony is so touching come and give the testimony and the person will give the testimony and then one day the man assisting bonky daku in african projects in african program he came and asked us did that man really die i said i don't know sir i'm just sharing this so he said because we booked a hotel for him and gave him a jeep that'll be carrying him he said no we must put him in the type of hotel we put bunky and then use a higher car to be carrying him that do you know what i saw i after all it is my testimony that is gathering more and more people here why do you know when you begin to see I, me, I, me, I, me, whenever you see somebody praying, I, 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 me, 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 check that person, he will soon be tired of that prayers. Because he's only limiting himself to himself. He's not spreading out. Just like what I said before, somebody, a child of God, you are the founder of that ministry, you are the overseer of that ministry, pay your tithe outside. Look for another man of God, another ministry that is blossoming, pay your tithe over there. Are you hearing me? Not that you pay your tithe in your own ministry, you will be ring my rolling. It is the same water that flow into this and flow into this kind of place. You see, pour it out on this one. But when you are doing it, it will be flowing into the ocean. Another connection shall be given to you. That's one of the secrets why a lot of people, even in the village, are making it faster and more. Are you hearing me? Okay. Okay. So where we read the Bible, the word of God said, the Bible, the word of God said, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. With the lowly is wisdom. When pride come, shame will come. Because pride will leave the person up. The person will fail. What follows again is shame. So if you don't want to fail in life, if you don't want to have setback spiritually, if you don't want to have setback in your marriage, if you don't want to have such a setback, remove pride in your life. Pride, arrogancy. A man got married to a young lady. The young lady stopped in primary school. The man said, no, 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 no. I want my wife to go to school. And the man trained the lady in the uh, secondary school and trained the lady in the higher institution. And one day they have a problem. So many the townspeople gathered and they said, Madam, you didn't do it right. You did it wrong here. You did it wrong here. Kneel down and beg your husband. The woman got up before everybody and said, Me, kneeling down to beg him. Do you think I'm an illiterate? Eh? Do you think I'm an illiterate? Do you think I'm an illiterate? Do you think I'm an illiterate? That was what the man, woman was saying. Who trained you? Who made you who you are? Pride. 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 Arrogance. May God deliver us from spirit of, of arrogant. So that we don't become arrogant. Spirit of arrogance. Ah! Arrogant spirit is a deadly spirit. It makes you to claim who you are not. It makes you to begin to fold your hand and then do as if you are fat, but you don't know you are too slim. I was buying something so many years ago. And I had a young lady insulting one man that came to buy. He was so insulting the man. The mother was there. He was so insulting the man. The, the, the man, they were all speaking big, big grammar. And the lady was equally speaking. And the mother was laughing. Uh, 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 he's a student of University of Calabar. He's a student. I was watching the mother. Instead of the mother to caution, they said, this is your customer number one. This is a man. You are a woman. And tomorrow now, the lady will be saying, I want to get married. I want to get out of the way. When he was doing this, exposing the man, scolding the man in the public, it was a very big public place. And sometimes I saw the lady getting old, not getting married. She might not know what the cause of her problem. I didn't say it might be that thing, but it might be. It might be the way she had been behaving that made her. She was educated. She was a beautiful young lady. But what happened to her later? Mm -mm. She couldn't get settled in marriage. The mother had money, so the lady had effrontery to insult everybody. But do you know one day where there was a fire came in and caught everywhere, everywhere got burnt. They started from square one. Sometimes God allow us to learn our lesson in a hard way. He allow us. It's too many men of anointing have ended up that way. Because you have anointing, because you have the grace in you, before you come to program, you tell them the type of hotel they are going to keep for you, tell them the type of food they will keep for you, you tell them the type of this, the type of this. Do you know a man of God was asked to come and do a program? It was the ministry that was sending him, not him using his money. Do you know the first requirement he gave the ministry? He told them, uh -huh, the, the, the Christian Association, Okay, Christian Association of his own country told him, Go so 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 where I represent us and pray this prayer. He told them, I don't enter second class. 
But whenever he enters play, it must be first class. And I had one of the multi-millionaires saying, one of the multi-millionaires, I had him saying that he has not entered first class in his life. The man was a, is a multi-millionaire. He said he has never, so, but why should he enter first class? Is he not the same plan? That's carrying everybody. That he has never entered. And the man that is asking people for money is not entering first class as a must. Mm. May God show us mercy. There are certain things we do, we don't know they are pride. You cannot be taught. Before somebody wants to teach you, you come in, yes, now nah, I have the same experience, this, that, that, that. Listen to him, listen to her, and gather more experience and add to your own. That is how to grow. This thing I'm speaking out, I'm giving out, I'm giving out. I need to listen, I need to read again, to fill up myself. Let's remove unnecessary pride. You know, God, I told God, any day you see pride in my life, deal with me. I keep praying that prayer. I told you what happened years ago when I bought my V boot car. You know, I was going to a particular church. You know, oh, that my friend. I said, when I go, I'm going to park in the front of the car, in the front of the church, I mean, just towards the door. Pride came into me. I said, I'm going to park there. Anybody that come in will say, ah, who has this V boot? Who has this V boot? I know my friend had them V boot. Do you know by the time I went there, I've been praying prayer that God will deal with me anytime pride is in my life. I was praying that prayer, not knowing it had been answered already by God Himself. Do you know as I went to that particular church? When I was there before I could drive in, oh my God, I saw two clean, beautiful Homer Jeep in front of the church. The church was flooded with powerful, powerful cars. I was ashamed of myself. That was the time I came to myself. If you have been living in pride, may you come to your senses in the name of Jesus. I was looking for, I looked for, there was no space to park within the church arena. I have to go to one corner, one corner, one go to somewhere, one corner, and put the vehicle there, and just came out. I said, God, thank you for delivering me from pride. God knows how to humble us. To keep telling him, Lord, humble me. That he keep humbling me. That this pride and arrogancy, that this pride of my life, in any way, pride rule it in my life, let it go and go forever. So the pride will not rule over you, and pride will not rule over me in the name of Jesus Christ. God hates pride. He don't want us to go by it in any form, in any way. He hates it and don't want you to have it in any form, in any way. May the mighty hand of God help us. That pride will never rule over our life in Jesus' name. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse 23. 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 The Bible, the word of God said, A man's pride shall bring him low. 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 Why are you going for things that will bring you low? Pride is of the devil. He was the uh, archangel in charge of music. But look up. When pride came, he became nobody. A man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Hallelujah. When you're humble in the spirit, this person is bigger than you, this person is higher than you, this person is better than you, this person is more elevated than you, this person is this than you. Okay. But I would say, honor one another. Even if you're higher than others, honor them. And God will lift you up. You know, by the time I finished secondary school, I said I want to go to school. They said, there's no money, you will not go to secondary school. This, that, 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 that. You are going to serve somebody, this, and that. I told them, I want to go to school. God told me I will go to school, whether there's money or no money. I said, when they were, prayer was so much, I said, okay, this, this is a long time, uh, uh, two months holidays, let me go. I visited the man in the north. And he brought in another boy that two of us will serve him. I know in me, I will not serve him. So by the time we went there, the other boy, a small boy, before the night, he would jump on bed, go out to sleep. I would just sleep on the floor. I was not complaining. I was not saying anything. One day, I didn't know what happened. Our master is not living in that place. We used to sleep in the store. And then he's living with the family somewhere. So, when the man came, one day he asked the question. He said, Who sleeps on bed? I kept quiet. Who sleeps on the I kept quiet. The boy said, uh, uh, Sir, I'm the one that sleeps on bed. He said, ah, A small boy like you. 
you are you just finished primary school and this young man finished secondary school and he came and sleep on the floor and you sleep on the, are you not wise don't try that again he scolded me damien but why such humility i said do i drag that with him i, I don't need to struggle with him about that I said, okay, okay. that was how i was lifted up to be sleeping on bed and he was sleeping on the ground. He was demoted and was promoted. Just like exactly what the Bible said here. The Bible said, A man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. You don't think that you know it all. Ah, me, I pray. I can pray. Uh, me, I, I evangelize. Uh, ah, me, uh, I spend money for work. Everything. Pride, pride, pride. You want the whole world to know what you have done. There are people when I look at their emptiness. When they brag of the, I will look at their emptiness. Somebody came to me again and told me how anointed he is. He said to prove him any crusade I'm having, I to allow him to preach. I will. I was just looking at him. I was just looking at him. I was just looking at him. I saw a young man full of zeal. I brought him. I wanted to teach him the rudiments of the God. I wanted to teach him ministerial ethics. I wanted to teach him the way to go up in the Lord and have a taproot. Hey! Before I could say one, he have said seven. Before I could quote one Bible, he have quoted four scriptures. I allowed him. Today he's ringing my rolling everywhere. He's full of pride. He said, Do you mean a person of my caliber? You mean a person of my level? Hmm. A man of God was serving in a particular church, and at the end of the day, they made pastors the appreciation day. The church members are not rich. They brought little tin. By the time they gave his own portion to him, he took it and sent it back and said, a person of his level, a person of his caliber has passed this. He's only living in one room with the wife and children. One room. Wife, children, and the visitors that used to visit them. One room. But you see how he arrogates himself. He never knew that God is trying to put him on a trial. Trial to know. If arrogance and pride is in his life, God will keep trying you to know if the pride is there. If I bless you, if I give you this money, will you make use of it? Or will you be making trouble and problems? God will keep trying you. Hey, you cannot be trusted until you are tested. You cannot be, you know, you know, are you hearing me? You cannot be trusted until you are tested. Yes. Mm. May God help us. I still love this scripture. A man's pride shall bring him low. May your pride not bring you low. May because you are educated, because you are a graduate of so 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 university, and what has it to do? Is this a certificate to heaven? You are a graduate of so 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 university, and what about it? You speak Queen's English, and what about it? Go and bank the Queen's English you're speaking and eat it. One professor said he's ashamed of himself these days in occasion that he doesn't jump occasion easily. That they will bring them to occasion and they saw them. He said they will bring them to occasion and before you understand it, an illiterate will speak and speak and get 5 million, 10 million. And the professor will come there and begin to blow grammar, blow grammar. People will say enough of that grammar, sir. Tell us what you are giving. Whenever he mentioned, you know, he would like to quote it. Maybe if you want to give 50,000 naira, he will say... Uh, 0 0.005 million. Ah! They never know. When people who are says, ah, it's 50,000 that he brought now. One professor told me he's ashamed of going to occasion and sharing occasion today that this illiterate have so insulted them. I've come there and insulted them because they have the money. This one have book. You are king over there. The other person is king over there. Stop you know, being too arrogant. Stop being so proud on that field. You fear that you are king. You are all in all. There are other things you don't you know equally. Are you hearing me? When you fear that you know this, you don't know it all. There are people who are great, who are mighty, who have gone so far in a particular field of life again. So when you feel you know it all, you don't know it all. There are places and some actions and some parts that you don't even know that somebody have known. In the book of Proverbs chapter 16 again, verse 5, Proverbs is talking to us, he's talking, he's talking in Proverbs and I'm interpreting it to you. Pro Pro Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 5. Proverbs 15, 16, 1, 6, 16, verse 5. The Bible said, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. When you are proud, it's an abomination. It will bring you low. It will bring you down. 
Remove that pride. Ask God for a humble spirit. Even when you fall, ask God why did you fail? Come on, get yourself broken. Some people come and see a younger person and say, are you waiting for me to greet you? Anybody can greet them. Oh, come on, good morning, darling. How are you? How, oh, you know, you have, I hope you have a sweet sleep. You have a sweet night. Like I've said it before, stop asking people, how was your night? Except you're too close and too intimate. How was your night now? Nah? How was your night now? Nah? Go to English dictionary and discover how was your night. How was your night? You mean you're asking a married woman, how did you have, say, your relationship with your wife in the night? You're not supposed to ask that question. I hope you have a nice, sweet, nice rest. You say, yeah, I had it. So many people keep asking me, uh, uh, how was your night? I'll turn at them and look. They don't know the grammar they are blowing. Mm. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. I mean, when you have abomination in heart, when you have such a haughty spirit, you are an abomination to the Lord. I'm telling you the causes of setback. I told you two things today. Number one is if you are not a tighter, if you are getting the money and eating, getting the money and eating, so many people don't pay their tight. So many people are not faithful in paying tight at all, at all, at all. At all. Tim may hit them. They say this month I'll pay tight next month. Yeah, forget about them. So many men of God have been calling me, man of God, come and talk to them about that. I say I'm not a prosperity preacher. Tell them to pay tight. If they refuse you, the pastor, do you pay? I was asking one man of God that was pressurizing his people. They have not paid tight. If they pay tight, I know how much I'll be. I said, sir, do you pay your own? He said, he's a Levite. He's supposed to be receiving. I said, eh, you don't know that Levite pay tight of tight. Pay tight outside your ministry. And you see how God will keep favoring and blessing you. He said, ah, is he supposed to pay tight? I said, wait there now. No wonder hunger is murmuring you. Oh, you don't know you're supposed to pay tight. You're only waiting to be receiving. And you receive without giving. Are you dead to see? Dead Sea is the only river I know. See, I know in the world that, you know, Sea of Galilee flow into it. Jordan flow into it. And some other river flow into it, but it doesn't flow out. And it doesn't get tired. They continue accumulating. No wonder when you get to Dead Sea, when you walk in there, stay there, it doesn't flow out. When you walk in, you can sit down on Dead Sea and lie down on Dead Sea. It's receiving too much. Child of God. That's what the scripture, the word of God said. It's an abomination. Pride is abomination. Because you are a lawyer. Do you know, most lawyers are very proud. Most doctors are very, very proud. Very, very proud. Ah, many professors. There are very humble professors. But there are so many proud ones. What is your field of life? So many proud nurses. What is your pride? That you are still Britain. Eh? Your pride is because you are still Britain. How do you expect somebody like me to come down to this level to eat this and to eat that? Ah! Most of the time when I go to the program, they say, Daddy, what do we prepare for you? What do we prepare for you? I say, Bible said, eat whatever thing that is said before you. Go and bring what you can give to me. But I don't like Indomie. I'll tell them, how can you give, uh, you know, Indomie? I see it as poison. That is why I told them, I don't like Indomie. Don't, don't bring me Indomie. Don't give me, don't give me that, please. All these noodles. I don't mean only in them, I mean the general noodles. Mm -mm. I told them that. They will say, okay, okay, okay. This and this and that and that and that. Whatever thing they bring, I'll eat it. There was a program I went to. If you see the kind of hotel they kept me, oh my God. The rug itself. Was she dust there. The bed. Hey, I stayed there for four days. For Jesus' sake. I had money to go and rent a very good hotel. But I said, let me stay here. For Christ's sake. I stayed. And God made a name for himself. After 12 years, they are still surprised I'm talking about it. May God help us. May we so humble ourselves that people will say, wow. I've not seen it like this. Could this be the man? Could this be the man? Let's so humble ourselves. That was years ago when the palace started. Her brother Kumi, he was tending to call him brother. They were calling him brother Kumi. It was later they said, no, he's a pastor. He's a, a, a leader among us. Let's call him pastor. Do you know people that don't know him, he wear with the state of Russia or would disguise himself ordinarily. When people are coming for the convention, coming for the camping, he says, oh brother, you're welcome. He'll carry their bag, send them in, carry their bag. And they were talking, hey, 
And how can I get this? Okay, well, direct them, direct them, direct them. Direct them. They don't know this. By the time you mind the people to preach, ah, it is Pastor Kumi, the man that took my bags and this inside. Ah! But then he was not preaching in television, and you know by then uh, the this our uh, social media have not been up there. And when the panel started in those seventies, humility, humility, humility. May God remove pride out of us. All this unnecessary pride. May God remove them. Remember, we read Proverbs chapter sixteen, verse five. Let's read verse eighteen. Okay, verse eighteen said. Pride goeth before what? Destruction. Okay? Look at verse 19. Look at what verse 19 says. Verse 19 says, Better is it to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the pride. It's better you move with people who are lowly than move with proud people that can put you in trouble. Proud people that can put you in trouble. Somebody was proud. Two of them are proud people. They went to hotel. They requested something, not asking the pride. The money is there now. By the time they finished eating, they were told how much of the 250,000 they consumed in such a high class of that. They said, what do you mean? What do you mean by that? What, 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 what do you mean? What, what did we eat? Why didn't you humble yourself to ask how much is it? You are requesting, I requesting, I requesting. So you're coming in. One proud boy like that met a lady. The lady had four girlfriends. So then let me take care. He took all of them out. And this one was demanding big starter, three big star, three this one, paper soup, this and this. By the time the money was about 70, 80,000, they ate in a while. Mm. The man told the waiter that is coming, Th that girl, the other one in the middle will pay. The man disappeared. Those ladies were told, the man that brought you have gone, or you say you pay. They say, hey! You have nothing to do except you are going to be sweepers in this hotel. You must pay. It has led a lot of people to destruction. It has led a lot of people to early grave. It has led a lot of people who are supposed to be mighty to be no more than pride. That is why some people cannot just say, I'm sorry, because of pride. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. Forgive me. The issue will have ended. Now, have you not seen somebody that hit somebody before? Bah. I was working, one was it some three months ago or two months ago. Ah, who is this man? It was we were in a, 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 you know, a hold up. Bah. At the back, I said, why, 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 why? The man himself drove out and said, sir, please. Nothing happened to the vehicle. I said, I am sorry, sir. I am sorry, sir. I didn't even come down from the vehicle to see if anything happened. But he said, I'm sorry, sir. I have to drive him. It was after two, three days. I said, ah, somebody hit me. Let me see. And nothing really happened. May God deliver us from spirit of pride. May arrogance and pride disappear from us in Jesus' name. Finally, I would want us to read the last lesson I want us to read today. So that we're going to pray together by the divine grace of God. That anything that I've been causing you sit back, you know them and know you are part of the problem. Hallelujah. In the book of James chapter 4 verse 6. James chapter 4 verse 6. James chapter 4 verse 6. But he gave it more grace. Wherefore he said, God resists the proud. But give it grace unto the humble. When you are not humble, God will resist you. When you are humble, he will give you grace. Are you looking for grace to succeed? Humble yourself. Hmm? The Bible said, don't despise the days of little beginning. So many people could not make it because they saw the beginning and said, how can I come down? How can I do this and this and that? I went somewhere. My friend told me a testimony. He was my classmate. We met again after 30 years or thereabout. We met again after 30 something years. We met again on social media. He told me he's in town. I visited him. We were talking. I went there with my wife. He told, followed me to my house. He was telling me his story. He told me where he was. He failed and failed and failed. I had nothing again. People thought he was a big boy then. But look at the foundation of homestead he made. Look at the other progress was made. But club and whatever sapped his money. He became poor. He came down to the east. People could not help him. All the help he needed was not there. He said he saw people selling recharge card. And saw there are people are buying recharge card. He asked them, this, uh, they told him, oh, you want to enter for your wife? Uh, with 15, 20,000, they can make it this and this. A man that was high. A man that was okay. The following day, he went. Somebody gave him that money. He said his sister gave him the money. He rushed back there again. 
maybe around 30 or 40,000 the sister gave to him. He rode back there again and carried it and put empty in, glow and whatever, and carried their bags and was said, people saw him. They, when he came back to the shop, the people laughed. And laughed. He said, is it because I come here every day, we talk story. You buy me afternoon food. What about my wife and children? And before I understand it, he said, this person bought, this person bought, this person bought. He calculated again. He made, he said he made 17 naira. He said, yeah, he was happy. He said, another day he made 150 naira. He was happy. He said, another day he was making 300 naira again. He was happy. He said, money is coming, you know. And before you understand it, as I'm talking to you now, he was, he's one of the distributors of the card. People were mocking. He said, somebody saw him one day in a very big open place. He said, ah, ha, ah, when have you gone to this level? When he told the person, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. He walked away. Until when he came home and built a house, the man said, ah, so the money is a Richard card. He started in a humiliating way. But God lifted him up. Be determined in what you are doing. Remove shame. Remove pride. You can succeed in life. A professor was going to teach. He was looking for somebody whose brain is hot, you know, with all the pride. Oh, he was looking for an argument. You know, they say spirit argument wins. While the professor was preparing himself, what am I going to say? Who would there? He has to cross a river. Just across the river, he saw a small, a, a young man paddling canoe. And the young man entered, he, the professor entered into the canoe. And the young man was moving. He asked the young man, do you know about anthropology? The young man said, no, sir, I don't know about it. Ah, ah, ah. What a common biology? Do you know about biology? He said, no, I don't know about biology. He said, don't know about biology. What of uh, 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 sociology? He said, I don't know this. Thing. Ah, ah. The professor said, so many people don't know so many things here on earth. The young man allowed him. There, there was some wave in the sea. The young man purposely did it. He paddled it this way, paddled it this way, paddle, 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 paddle. And then the water was a kind of turning, and they turned, they jumped into the sea. The young man allowed the professor, he drank about six to seven uh, bottles of water or gallons of water. After he must have drank some gallon, he turned the canoe and helped him, lifted him up and put him inside the canoe again. He was pressing his leg, the leg of a professor with all his book, grotting and gone. He was pressing his belly. Water was coming out of the mouth, out of the nose, out of ear. Yeah. By the time he was brought, the man ashore. He told the man, sir, do you know about swimmingology? The man said, no, no, I don't know how to swim. That's why it happened to me. He told the man, do you know about canoeology? The man said, no, I don't know about canoe. He told him, do you know about paddleology? How to paddle canoe? The man said, no. Ah, the young man smiled and said, so many people don't know so many things here on earth. Remove arrogance. You know this, you don't know the other one. May the mighty hand of God help us. Shall we pray? Shall we begin to pray? You are looking for cause of setback. Why am I dry in the spirit? These are the things God has helped us to enumerate all of them. God is giving you a sharp knife today. He's giving you a sword of the Spirit today so that you can go higher and deeper in Him, so that you can go and explode again, so that you can go and shine again. Child of God, having heard this word of God tonight, if you are not born again, you are proud. If you are not born again, you are stealing from God. The opportunity God gave you, He wants it to be stolen from you. Is it not high time for you to say, God will resist you if you're proud, but he, if you humble yourself, he will take you up and higher. This is time for every child of God. This is time for you to make peace with God. Do you want to make peace with God? Do you want to make heaven at the end of your life? If you want to make heaven at the end of your life, why not say, Lord Jesus? I am sorry I am a sinner. I come, in, come into my life, Lord. Save my soul. Deliver me, Lord. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Give me grace to be a child of God. Now and all the days of my life. Amen. Having received Jesus as Lord and Savior, may you be blessed, may you be favored. Let the mighty hand of God fall upon you. Let the mighty hand of grace come upon you. I cover in the blood of Jesus as God of heaven and earth. We see you thoroughly through in every aspect of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. The grace to be a child of God come upon you. May you stand for the Lord. Any one of all that have been having arrogance in our life, may God deal with us. Let the demon and spirit of pride get out of your spirit, get out of your soul, get out of your body. May spirit of pride be gone. The spirit that caused Satan what is supposed to have been in heaven, Lord, let that soul spirit get out of us. The spirit that may can not to humble himself, to accept his own punishment, let it get out of you. The, out of us in the name of Jesus Christ. I begin to pray for you right now that the mighty hand of God, mighty hand of grace will come your way. Let your marriage be sweet again. You woman, may you humble yourself before your husband. And you man, may you remove arrogance and love this woman that said, yes, I will marry you.
May the mighty hand of God be upon you, upon us, and may you be kept by the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Everything from the one to now, from part one to now, that have been causing setback in your life. I return them, I restore you again. Every setback, get off. Every setback, get off. Every setback, get off. Every setback, get off. Let every setback get off and get off in the name of Jesus Christ. As I destroy every setback right now, I ask the glorious hand of God, I ask the elevated power of God, let the power of great grace and the power of the most holy God walk upon your spirit, soul, and body, lift you up again, bless you, favor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every difficulty on your way get off again. As you have amended your ways, as you have repented from all your sin and unrighteousness, may the mighty hand of God of visitation visit you. Let the God of love love you. Let the God that show way show you a way. And may his name be glorified in you. To God our Lord be other glory as his mighty peace rule over you. I cover you again and again in the blood of Jesus. May the King of glory, the Lord Jesus, rule over your life. And may his mighty hand protect and preserve you. Let his divine peace be your portion and procession in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the mighty answer. We give you all the praise, adoration, and thanksgiving. We give you all the worship and mind, all the adoration and thanksgiving. May Christ's name alone be honored. Unto him be all the glory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Daddy, you are highly lifted up. You are highly exalted and glorified. And let that glory be above all the earth. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. It is well, and his great peace is upon you. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you so much. Be favored of the Lord. I got to see you again by Sunday morning. In the name of Jesus, I got to see you again. Invite your friends, share this message, and listen to this message more. These are the 10 that causes setback. We just gave you about 10 different points that got all more points that gave you that causes setback in the life of people. May you never be set back again. And as you rise this time around, you are not falling back. In the name of Jesus, great grace will protect you, preserve you. And Jesus is Lord over your life. God bless you. Remember favored. We got to meet again. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you.